This is an application that allows you to submit cases and manage these. But the uh, key part of this is to demonstrate how you can use everyone on the internet to be able to absorb a case. Uh, here we have a case table. Link it to a contact that you may have in your system, um, which is a child of a company. So a company has contacts. These people submit cases, but they're not QuickBase users. Uh, and it's meant to showcase some things around using EOTI or everyone on the internet. So let's uh, take a look at a, a form. So this is a form, as you can see up above. Uh, it's a new record where there's a special DFID which only shows this form, and it, there's a text element at the top that allows you to put some graphics in here. And we are using iframe version equals uh, 500 in here. Let, let's say we did 400. It's the number of pixels from the left border. Now it's a little more centered. Uh, let's fill this out. We'll say billing application, low, medium, or high. Remember, this is uh, for cases. And the uh, su subject is uh, internet is down. Um, can someone look at my IP address? Something like that. So, and that's not a billing one, is it? Let's say that it's a service request. Okay. Uh, down below, we could put file attachments in here, and it doesn't matter the kind of file attachment we might want to put in here. I'll put a regular old graphic. Um, and because this is EOTI, I like to put uh, something in here that allows me to backtrack or figure out who the person is that's asking me this. So I like the name um, and a, a phone number. Now inside here, we're going to uh, submit this case and it says, thank you very much. Uh, so that's the EOTI uh, person. Let's go over to our email and look at our inbox. And you can see there's the case that's been submitted and I'm receiving this uh, as well. So historically, uh, you've got a copy of this. You're the submitting person. So let's go back into the um, into the application. Where am I? I think I'm here. And let's go back to the dashboard. And what we've got is a um, internet is down. I'm going to assign a technician. Now, I've just taken a Kanban and put a a uh, uh, a field on here that allows us to be able to edit the record that we're on. So I'm going to click on that and just select Kirk Tracy and submit. Now all I did was edit that record and uh, let's take a peek at what happens over here. Now I've also received, well first of all let me say that the, by editing the record the form changes it to the assigned state and you can see it's moved over from from here over to here um, and there's that case right here. So I'm going to click on to it. Now, there was a little bong in the background. It's really, uh, here's the case, and here's the information about this person's email. And it maps and it found a contact inside the company and it pulled down this, uh, this lookup information. If you go down further, the, uh, the case information is here. Uh, if I edit this and uh, I come down here, I can, let's say close this as resolved. I can put some internal notes here and and we might say over here it uh, must be Comcast. Um, after spending three years trying to get a Comcast problem fixed and I finally got it yesterday, I feel um, validated that I can say that. Um, and so let's save this. Now, because the status of this has changed to uh, closed, excuse me, down here, uh, we have a history of the notes, but it's also going to take this text and put it into my email. So let's go back to my email, go back to my inbox. And this is uh, a notice that says your case concerning the internet is down, has been closed with the status of closed. 
it must be Comcast is inserted into the email. Now there are two buttons here. Whenever you're using EOTI, everyone on the internet or an anonymous user in QuickBase, you never want to be able to view or allow the customer to edit or view information. What you can do is let them view emails that you send them and send them intelligent buttons. And if I hover over this, I don't know if you see in the gray, this is an intelligent button. I'm gonna click on this and it allows me to um, fill out this form and you can see it's passing values on. So I know who it's connected to. It's connected to that case that was. So did we answer the question? I could say yes, but if I say no, you can see form rules can be invoked here because this is really a quick base um, uh, a form. So uh, good. And we could finish off this form here and say yes, yes, yes and yes and submit the survey in which case it says thank you well in the background what's happening is that record has been added as a child to um this uh this here and we'll find over here internet is down we'll I'll, we'll look at that in a second that's going to be uh, uh populated as a child record it actually is this survey table record. We sent them a button to add a survey record linked back to the case that originated it. And now the other option that we have, if I go back to my email, is to reopen the case. Now, if I choose this option, um, I can say um, it's down again and open the case update the case. Now, once again, they've you've not seen anything other than what we've sent in email. And you can use these buttons to be able to, uh, let's go into the record, click. And as I scroll down here, you can see that there's a survey that has been added that's linked back, as well as the um, case update. It's down again. So you could use pipelines to fire off whenever a child record is created, go back up to the top parent record, change the status back, which would fire off a notification to the, uh, uh, excuse me, fire off a notification to the person that's assigned to, to rework it, and the loop and the process goes on. So anyway, that's just a, an example of using CSS buttons. I guess I didn't show you what the CSS button looks like, so let me go down to that button that we're emailing out. Uh, this button is the send feedback one. Uh, now I use a formula rich text field here and you want to do that because you want to put your style on this. If you use a formula URL, it's going to look like a hyperlink. It's not going to look like a button. It'll strip off the color. Uh, and, and so using your uh, CSS here really helps in the process of getting through emails and displaying properly. So I've got a background color, the text color, so we've developed a style variable here. So the, and then we also created a variable about well, what it is that we're going to do. Well, we're going to go into that child table, that DB surveys table, uh, do a gen add record form, which lets me fill it out. And it says, oh, by the way, while you're doing that, out of courtesy, why don't you fill in field 15 with the record ID? That's the reference field over there, field uh, 15. Uh, take the name, uh, who the assigned to is, and all that kind of information, and fill out the fields in that child table. Some of those you don't even see on the form when somebody presses that button. And then afterwards, it says that it's going to... Uh, uh, to a thank you page. So you can control that. And then all of this becomes this. Uh, you've got the style inserted in here, which is a concatenation of all this other stuff up here. And the href is that URL that we were doing and it's called submit feedback. So that's one of them. And then the other button that we're looking at, which is the reopen cases, uh, this one right here. And right click, edit the field properties. And this one does something very similar. It's got the color of the button up here, only this time it's going to a different table. And remember, you're always adding data. You're never editing and you're never uh, viewing. Now, uh, downstream, if you wish to fire a pipeline when that happens, then you can go back and edit the original um, 
uh, case if you wanted to, which gives it a, a whole looping functionality that's uh, kind of kind of interesting and opens up many different possibilities.